Not even a year ago, I paid $220 for a 16 amp charger and I thought that was a good deal. But now you can get this Dolar V132 amp portable charger with a 25 foot cable for just over $200. As an electric vehicle owner, I know how important it is to have a reliable and efficient charger, so I'm excited to try this one out and see how it performs. This unit comes in a nice carrying case that makes it easy to take it with you on the road. Inside we find the included hardware as well as the charger. The included cable organizer is simple but also acts as a holster for the charger when you aren't using it. The control unit is very easily mounted as we will see in just a minute thanks to a simple piece of paper that gives us the distance for the screws the control unit sits on. If you need more information on how it should be set up or what the menus mean, it's all included in the manual. It's also good to see what the the LED indicator colors mean and how to set up the delay time for charging. The charger is smaller in physical size than I imagined, which is a welcome surprise if it works as expected. We also see a snippet of information from the manual printed on the back of the unit. The cable between the control panel and the NEMA 1450 plug is 10 gauge, so it should have no problem handling 32 amps. On the other end, we have the charging head, which comes with a dust cap, which takes just a bit of force to remove so it won't fall off when not in use. It feels comfortable in the hand and it's made of plastic. Back to the NEMA 1450 plug, it looks to be constructed rather well and fully sealed. Now it's time to go get this installed and give it a proper test. Before installing, I just wanted to make sure it all works and it sure does. But also look at the length of that cable. It will reach at least halfway down my driveway. I like that. Thanks to the included template, installing this was a breeze. I marked the wall where I was going to drill the holes, drill those holes, install the included anchors and put the screws in. Same thing goes for the cable holder. Mark, drill, anchors, screws and done. The charger then slots in and the cable can be put in place as well. Now it's a little bit difficult for me to film the screen because it blinks on camera for some reason. It looks perfectly fine to my eye. But let me go through the little menu here quickly and show you what it can do. Obviously the screen uh, alternates between showing voltage, amperage, temperature and a little bit of an error. So that's telling me that uh, there is no ground on this connection. And I just wanted to show you that it does have some pretty cool safety features. Now the second screen is going to tell us how long it's been plugged in and how much charge has gone into the car. So it's only been charging for two minutes and we put 0.1 kilowatts into the vehicle. So like 100 watts, right? Now, once I unplug it from the car, I can go and press this button again and that's gonna take us to the settings. In the settings, we have two options, current switching. So that's gonna allow us to change the power that it delivers to the vehicle. So we can go between 10, 16, 24 and 32 amps. So we can just switch like that and we can let's say limit it to 24 or 32 amps. I'm going to leave it at 32. I'm just going to press and hold to confirm. Okay, and that setup is complete. Now we can press and hold it again to go back into the menu and go to the second option, which is charging appointment. It's basically a delay in when it starts charging. So if we press and hold again, we can delay this charger from charging for two, four, six or eight hours. So if you get lower rates, let's say at night, what you can do is when you get home at six, you know, put it to six hours delay and then in six hours. So if you press and confirm, it says that it's going to start charging in six hours. So basically it's not going to pull any uh, electricity from the wall until six hours pass. And then you'll start charging, let's say at midnight when the rates are cheaper. Pretty cool. And then you can just press and hold to uh, cancel that setting if you like. And now for a bit of a test. I just went on a pretty long drive, so the battery is fully depleted. Let's plug it in. There you go, it has started charging. So let's go in the car and see what it says. Let's see how long it's gonna actually take to charge this car up. All right, so how long is it gonna take to charge up this car from basically zero? Well, it's 8.30 right now. And it says it's going to be done by 1230. So what, that's about four hours. It'll be done in four hours. So that's from eight and a half percent to 100%. That's pretty quick for a portable charger. 
Let's go see what the charger says. Now at the charger, let's see what it actually shows us. So it's showing us the voltage, 232 volts. Of course, it's two minutes that it's, since it's been plugged in and it's charging at 29.6 amps. So basically 30 amps. And that's pretty much the maximum that my car can accept, or at least that's the maximum it can accept at this time. Each car will have a different charging rate, different charging curve. So a lot of it depends on the car, but this will supply a max of 32 amps. Well, it's not quite 12 o'clock yet, but it has been almost three hours. And as we can see, it has put in about 15.3 kilowatt hours into the battery. It has slowed down to about six amps or 5.8 amps. So it's charging a lot slower than it was when we started. Why is that? Well, it's the charging curves that I mentioned earlier. The car starts drawing a lot less current once it reaches a certain charge state. So let's go in the car and see how far along it actually is now. All right, as you can see, it's been about three and a half hours. It's not even 12 yet, but the car is now at 98.5% state of charge. So we are basically done. But the very interesting thing to see here is that the last one and a half percent will actually take 30 minutes to do. I've used this unit for a few days though, and I can say that I am kind of impressed. I have tested charges that are almost double the price of this one, and this performs just as well. It may not have the same premium feeling materials, but everything is solidly built, and most importantly, it works as advertised. Some of the features that I really liked, especially at this price point, were the status display on the front, in addition to the indicator LED right here. The big LED lets you know from a distance what is happening and the display gives you all of the details. I also like that you can switch the power output digitally and on the front of the unit without having to take it off the wall if you have it mounted. The 25 foot cable feels solid, although it's not as thick as I've seen on some other 32 amp chargers, but I haven't had any issues when using it, so I think it'll be just fine. Do keep in mind though that this comes with the NEMA 1450 plug and there are no adapters included with this. So you'll have to have the NEMA 1450 receptacle in your garage in order to use this. My BMW i3 charges at max 7.7 .7 kilowatts, which is about 32 amps at 240 volts. So this matches my car perfectly. But if your car is capable of higher speeds, you will be limited to 7.7 .7 kilowatts. If your car can only charge at, let's say, 3.3 .3 kilowatts, then the charger will only provide 16 amps. You get the idea. Overall, I would recommend the Dowlar V1 Level 2 EV charger to anyone in the market for a reliable charging solution for their electric vehicle. It's small, very small for what it can do, fast, easy to use and packed with features to make it a great value for the price. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button if you found this review useful and I'll see you in the next one.